doing that out on the fly, yes? And you're asking those questions on the fly. How much is your mortgage payment? 10, 20, 30 a year. Do you have any insurance at work? Do you have any private insurance? You're basically doing that on the fly. And so you're recapping that in step three. Step four is the core transition into finding the pain. The exact questions to ask in the home. And now I'm going to take you into core transition number five. Core transition number five is three option close. So that is the progression. And here's what I would say once I've gone ahead and I found the pain. And I've questioned her about him. And I've questioned him about her. And they both expressed to me the difficulty, what it would be like. The kids would have to change school. She'd have to get a second job. They don't know how they'd manage. They'd lose their house. They'd get foreclosed on. All these things that we've uncovered. Okay. What I'd like to do for you now is what I would say to them. I'm going to write that one down. Why? Because it's, it's with them. What's in it for me? What can you do for me? Show me the prices. So, what I'd like to do for you now is I'm going to put together a couple of programs. I'm going to write this one down. This is exactly how it's delivered. What I'm going to do for you now is I'm going to put together a couple of programs based on everything that you've told me here today. At this point, I give them the brochure. I give them something to read. And I let them know to please be patient with me. It's going to take me a few minutes to put these together. If you need to get up and grab something to drink or whatever you need to do, socialize with your husband, whatever. But just give me a couple minutes, be patient. You should all at this point have all the rate calculators on your phone. And you now know, based on everything that they told you, which carrier you're going to use. Is it going to be Phoenix? Is it going to be Foresters? For the new people just getting started, that's your go-to. If they're young and super healthy, is it going to be American National? For example. And then what I like to do is, is I don't do anything fancy. I don't use a legal, uh, legal pad. I don't have anything specific. I just take the lead and flip it over. If you're working with those B leads, I just take the back of the B lead and I just flip it over. I mean, I literally, I've got writing all over these things, and I'll flip it over. And this is just a, a very simple example as to how you're going to deliver the three option close. Option one that you're going to give them is 100%, 50% is the second option, and then a 36-month mortgage protection payment program. This is assuming that they are in their, let's say, mid-40s, they bought a new home, their, the home is 200000 and their mortgage payment is a thousand bucks a month. So that's the scenario. So I then sit back with them, they come back over, and I go, okay, Bob and Mary, here's what I did for you. I listened to everything you told me, and this is kind of the method behind my madness. It's just something I say. And I go, what I did was, is you would express to me several times that it was very important to you to make sure that the full mortgage was covered. And so option number one is I covered your full mortgage 100% and that's going to be $150 a month. Option number two is what I did is I just took your mortgage and I cut it in half. It's the philosophy of it's better to have some than none. That is going to be $100 a month. And then the last option, how I came up with 36000 36, is what I did was, is I actually took your actual mortgage payment and I times it by 36 months. Mary, why did I do that? Because in the event that anything happens to Bob, it gives you peace of mind. That in the event that anything happens to him, you have three years exactly to figure out, do I want to stay in the home? Do I want to sell my home? Do I want to maybe flip it, make it into an investment property? But as you're picking up the pieces and you're moving on with your life, there's one bill that you will not have to worry about, and that's your mortgage. You don't have to worry about going into foreclosure. You can allocate this money 
put it into a side account, and every month use that money to make your mortgage payment until you figure out what you're going to do. And that was $25 a month. Now, what we do is something called a non-medical privilege. Guys, you want to write that down. What we do is something called a non-medical privilege. What does that mean? That means that in the event that you're eligible, and I believe that you both would be eligible based on the answers to the questions that I've asked you from the medical history, and you don't have a prescription history, the insurance company will cross-reference your answers to the MIB report, Medical Information Bureau. They're also going to cross-reference your prescription history. And as long as everything comes back normal, which I know it will, they will offer you one of these plans as a privilege without having to go through a medical exam. Based on that, let me ask you, Bob, out of these three, which one makes the most sense? And then I'm quiet. And it's the first person to talk loses. <clears throat> and then they're going to make a decision. They're going to, I mean, he's going to look at her, and she, she's, she's usually going to be the one that she's going to go, I think he should have this one. It's usually what happens, okay? But then he goes, yeah, but is that, is that, is that too much out of our range, budget-wise? Wouldn't it make sense for me to maybe have half? And then they're trying to figure it out. Don't just sit there after a few minutes of them talking it through and you still not saying anything. You have to be the expert and you have to step in, but I'm going to share this with you. Ask permission first. So I would say something in this particular scenario where they're not able to make a firm decision. You know they're gonna make a decision. You know they're doing something today. They just can't really figure out which one makes the most sense. I would say this. I would say, is it okay if I gave you a recommendation based on my many years of working with clients in the past? Now, if you're brand new, don't worry about it. Just say, would, excuse me, would it be okay if I gave you my recommendation based on me uh, uh, having, having the knowledge on how this all works? And they'll go, every time. There's never a time that they'll say no. They'll always go, sure. And I'll go, this program right here, in the event, and I'm going to recap what I told them, in the event of an unexpected illness, like a heart attack, stroke, cancer, if you know that your mortgage is a thousand bucks a month, and that gets you thirty-six thousand, do you think that that is going to be enough to cover you for a few years until you figure out what to do next? Would close to ninety-five percent of that lump sum amount would that be enough for you if you're not working and you've got some maybe unexpected medical bills that maybe insurance doesn't cover out of network? Do you think that that would be an appropriate amount for a living benefit? And then in the event of a catastrophe, Mary, you would receive that in a lump sum amount tax-free? Or do you think that this one right here is a little bit less, but because the budget is right and the number is okay, it's not this, but it's, it's enough, do you think that this makes the most sense? And I want to share with you. I'm going to follow up with you in the next year because I do annual reviews. And we can re-examine this program. Or is the budget just not really fitting either one of those and you're just more worried about the peace of mind? She will always step in and go, no, 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 I, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm going to go ahead. We should probably go with the one in the middle. I'd say 7 out of 10, they go with the one in the middle here in the next 48 hours because I want to be able to keep you in the loop and let you know exactly what's happening with your application. All I'm going to need from you here today is a valid driver's license. I know you both said that you're not taking any prescriptions and I just need your doctor's name, address, and phone number. I'm going to get my laptop fired up here and, we're, and we'll go ahead and get started. And I don't wait for them to say any. I literally just reach into my bag and take out my laptop and if for whatever reason they're both still sitting there 
I will just remind them again. Could you just do me a favor? Just go ahead and just go grab your, your driver's licenses and your doctor's name, address, and phone number, and I'll get this all started. And then go box them and up, and then they, they, they go about it and they go do it. And that's how you transition from one to the other. Let's go back. Let's say it's the same scenario and they still can't make a decision. They're torn. I did the same close. I said the same thing. Would you mind if I gave a recommendation and can I help walk you through this? I explain. Would that be enough for the living benefits or is that enough? And they're still like, you know what? Neither one of them are right. I will then ask permission a second time. And I will say, if it's okay with you, what I'd like to do is maybe find you something in the middle, and then we can see if maybe that works better. And all I do is I find something between 200 and 100, and normally that number right there is, what do you think? 150. 150. And I'll pull it up on my calculator, I will write it down. I'll write it down afterwards though, guys. I don't do, so what I like to do is I'll just, I'll just, um, we'll just call this, five just for the sake. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll pull out my calculator, I'll punch it in, and then I just flip the calculator around. And I go, this is how much it would be for 150,000. And it's 125 bucks a month. <clears throat> it's adequate coverage and I think it fits the budget. Would you agree? And they go with it. It's not, it's not magic. It's just you're giving them a fourth option. And it's only because they're so undecided that they can't make a decision. What's the alternative? The alternative is walking out of there with two people who couldn't make a decision and you weren't able to protect them and help them. It's not a good alternative. So in order to be able to help people do right by people, walk them through a process, just show them that fourth option. It doesn't happen all the time, but you'll sense it. You'll sense the, uh, uh, them not being able to, to, to make a decision together. And it's, it really is, it's your job. It's your job to walk them through that. This is on a straight mortgage protection, meaning they're in good health, no medical, everything's great. This is textbook, this is all you have to do, and then that's the transition into doing the application. Any questions about this one in particular? Yes. Is the death benefit the total between the two of them and the premium between the two of them, or is it two different policies? Uh, no. Uh, so, so let's just say, for instance, that this one was for Bob. Okay. And, and then, then Mary's. I, I apologize. Okay. And then Mary's would have been down here. Okay. And what I like to do is, as long as they're close in age, is I give them the same amounts. If they're totally different, if they're like 10 years apart, then you have to adjust. And meaning, let's say he was 10 years older than she was. Well, two things. Number one, because he's older, it's always more expensive, right, based on age. And number two, uh, actuarially, males die before females. And that's because you guys put all the stress on our shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> but so, on the fly, you'll know, okay, if this was, if this was Mary's, then Bob's first option is not going to be 200000 if he's 10 years older. It's probably going to be something different, maybe something closer to like, that might be his first option. Right. Okay? So, that's, that's how you would do that. Does that kind of clarify that? That's number one. Number two. I use this amount on purpose. If it's over $150 a month for the first option, be careful because they will get sticker shock. And it doesn't matter what option two and option three are, even if it's less than 150, they won't be able to get the first one out of their mind. I don't, I can't explain to you why, but I can tell you that when they see something over 150, they're going, <gasps> Expensive. I can't do that. We're gonna have to wait. Why don't you? Why don't you start with that one and then? <laughs> it's like looking at full retail price. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you you go full and you go backwards. That's the way you do it. Yeah. You just the rule of thumb is just don't go about 150. Now I've had this happen several times. 
You have to uh, let them tell you. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to change the scenario for you real quick. Let's say the mortgage, though, was 250000 not two hundred. Let's say that wasn't really the full. So let's say I'm going to change it. So let's say, right? So let's, let's just say that was seventy-five percent. So let's say that's really the amount. But when you put it in a calculator, you put in two fifty. It came out to be, for instance, I don't know. Let's say it came out to be two hundred bucks a month. Just as an example. Well, again, sticker shock. So you have to let them say to you, Joe. I like all your options, but that's not what I was looking for. I was looking for something that covers the whole mortgage. And then your job is to say, okay, I got it. I just didn't want to kind of, and I say it to people, I just don't want to kind of give you the sticker shock. I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. And then I'll pull it up, I'll write it down on the paper, and I'll go, that's what it is. And the, these types of individuals, they know what they want, and they're ready to buy. And then they will, they will just say, that's the one I want. And price doesn't matter. And that has happened several times. The example I gave about the, the big mortgage protection from the person that I called and did the text message, that's what they did. They had a $400,000 mortgage. But I didn't show her $400,000 in the beginning. And she literally stopped me afterwards and she said, Brett, I like everything you showed me, but that's not what I'm looking for. And I said, what were you looking for? She goes, I'm looking for something that's going to cover the whole mortgage. I said, it's going to be well beyond this first option. She goes, that's not a problem. And I showed it to her, and they went with it. But let them tell you. And they will. They know what they want. Yep? Should you ask for, like, a mortgage statement or anything? Like, in case they're in the dark about, or they are under the impression they owe more or less than what they actually have outstanding? No, so what happens is we aggregate the data from the county court records, and that's what that's how we get the oh, mortgage okay. now. Yep. Gotcha. The only time that there would be like, uh, so let's say there was a lead, and it said uh, two hundred thousand dollars, but then you get there, and they're like, no, that's not right. I actually did a home equity line of credit for seventy five thousand. That would be the only time that that happens. Okay. Yeah, because we aggregate the data from the county court records, it's almost always it's right on. Questions? Yes. Right in that case, with the four hundred thousand. Yep. Did you stick with, was it American National or did you go to like Forrester? Uh, I wrote them with uh, Phoenix. Or Phoenix. Yes. Okay. Because Phoenix does up to right. 400. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Um, as far as the mortgage payment, that's a full life versus term. No, that is term. That is? That is term. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we don't do our mortgage protection payment here as whole life. We only, I'm going to show you that here in a second. I whole life. I That's only if they have health issues, yes. But if they had health issues, then none of these would have been straight term. So our third option is never a whole life unless, I'll show it to you here in a second. I'm gonna show you three options. I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it as a mortgage protection payment program for you. Good? Everybody got that one? Yes. Have you ever got any question between like, let's say their option is the option on the right hand side, the middle option, <clears throat> face amount. So the premium dollar amount is four times what it was in the first option, but the face amount is not four times. Did you forget my question? Or no? no, because the way I explain it to them is just how I explain it to you guys. <clears throat> kind of the, 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 the rhyme behind my reason, the reason I did this is because I took your mortgage payment and I times it by a certain number of months because that's going to give you a certain amount of peace of mind to know that this is how long you have to make mortgage payments. Yeah, so they, yeah, they don't they don't compare the two. Okay. Yep. What else? Great questions. Great questions, guys. What else? <coughs> cool. All right. Let's do it one more time. And so what happens? Why do we have to go mortgage protection payment? Because sometimes you are going to encounter people who are on medications, maybe Maybe they're, they're generally, they're overall, they're healthy, but they're taking more than three medications for something specific. I had a client one time who, no heart issues, no cancer, no strokes, no chronic illnesses, height and weight were proportionate. Everything, I mean, literally looking at them, you're like, you're good. 
but then she was taking four medications for what's technically described as schizophrenia, but she was like, it's stress. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, there's four meds. You know, somebody at some point in time thought that you needed more than just one med for your stress and your anxiety. Um, and, that, you know, I'm, I'm joking, but I'm not joking because at the end of the day, I mean, that's a real, I mean, that's an issue. And, you know, you have to be, you have to be careful with that uh, because if you, if someone's taking more than three medications and they are in stellar health, it doesn't matter. The insurance companies are going to decline it. They're going to decline it. And a lot of times, yeah. your client will tell you that they are okay. Yes. You see Seroquel. What is that? Seroquel. What does that do? That, that's for schizophrenia. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Is it more three, three medications for one issue? or For one issue. issue. For multiple issues. One issue. issue. Okay. So three meds. For one issue, is almost an automatic decline. So you can have someone that takes four medications, but for two different issues. Totally. Right. Totally. right. Like let's say you had somebody two, two, two for blood pressure, two for diabetes. Or two for asthma. You're actually good. I'm going to talk about that here in a second too. Risk assessment. Yeah, they they actually did that with my brother. Uh, he's he's on three different meds for uh, depression and anxiety, and they took it away. They wouldn't do it. Yep. So good, good health and weight are proportionate. Never had any medical history, just this one thing, but it's unfortunate because just this one thing is a knockout. Yep. Somebody else? No, we're good? Okay, so let's say that's the case. Or let's say it's the case of somebody had something within the last five years. Maybe they had a heart attack, maybe they had a stroke, maybe they had something. Um, you're gonna do the third, all right, so remember how I did the 36 month mortgage protection payment? You're gonna do the same thing, except you're gonna use a whole life product because they're more lenient from an underwriting standpoint. You can have multiple medications, you can actually have multiple illnesses on a lot of whole life policies. The thing is, is that they're gonna give you less insurance for about the same price. Is everybody with me on that? Yeah. So you're getting less insurance for about the same price. So the delivery on a mortgage protection payment program has to be based on the peace of mind. And you also want to be very transparent and be very honest with your clients in the home and let them know <clears throat> the reason that we're going in this direction is because based on a, a medical history or a prescription history, this is what you qualify for today. It doesn't mean that this isn't what you're going to qualify for in a year or two when I come back and do my annual reviews, but as I sit here today, this is what you qualify for. So assure them that they can actually increase their coverage as long as they begin to get themselves healthy over the next year or two, okay? Every case is different, Joe said it. Every case is different. Guys, I have walked through well over 3,000 living rooms. I have never had two in the same. Never had two in the same. So I'm gonna, I'll show you this one, right? And so depending upon their age, so let's say they're in their 60s, and I'm just gonna use simple math. Their mortgage payment is $1,000 a month. So let's say for instance, uh, option number one would be for, uh, we'll do, just for the sake of it, we're just going to do 20, 20 months. So we'll do 20 months. And let's say 20 months, I'm just going to use the same option, was 150 bucks a month. And let's say option number two was for 15 months. And 15 months was, we'll call it, just simple, 100 bucks a month. And let's say this one's for 10 months. And for 10 months, it was, call that 65 bucks a month. All right. And again, this is based on the fact that their mortgage payment is a thousand bucks a month. So what does that mean? That means that they're getting 20,000, 15,000, or 10,000. Is everybody with me on that? Everybody get that? So I am going to deliver the same message to my client. What I just said to you is exactly what I'm gonna to say to them. Based on your previous medical history, based on your previous prescription history, you are gonna qualify for a plan 
that we call a mortgage protection payment program. Guys, when you call people on the phone, specifically a B-Lead, and they tell you that it's too expensive, that someone came out and met with them and they couldn't afford it, here's what that other person did. They didn't do this. What that other person did was come out and try to beat them over <coughs> the head with a super expensive whole life product based on pulling numbers out of the wind. They have a $100,000 mortgage and this person is trying to give them $50,000 because that's the max limit that their calculator allows them to for a whole life product. And they showed them something that was 350 bucks a month. Happens all the time. Inexperience, never taught the right way, right? It's just the reality. So when people tell you it's too expensive, it's just because somebody didn't do the right thing prior to you being there. So you can come in and show them something that's customized around their mortgage payment. And you'll deliver it the same way. Our mortgage protection payment program will give Mary 20 months of mortgage payments and that's gonna be 150 bucks a month. 15 months, 10 months. And then you just say to them, the only difference, Bob and Mary, is the length of time that she will have in mortgage payments. They are still gonna do an MIB report. They're still gonna do a prescription report. Out of these three options, based on a non-medical privilege, which one of these options makes the most sense to you today? And then let them choose. And here's what I'll share with you about this one. It's very rare. Remember earlier I talked about indecisiveness and not being able to make a decision? Pretty much here, it's pretty straightforward and cut and dry. Usually, it's here's what it's going to depend on. That. That's what it depends on. And in most cases, <clears throat> they're going to go with these two. Whereas in our other scenario, you're more these two. Is everybody with me on that? Does everybody understand the difference between straight mortgage protection and mortgage protection payment now? And how to present it? Any questions about this part at all? Yes. Do you um, reveal to them that this is whole life, that they'll cash value? It's, I mean, they're going to pay for it until. So the, I mean, do you get into that extent of it? Yep. So I don't ever, even when I was back in the day doing some final expense, I never really talked cash value because the cash value accumulation is so minimal. I mean, it takes forever to get a couple hundred bucks in there. It's just. It's just the way it is with whole life products. It's why we, we really focus on the index universal life products here because we know how much compounding interest and cash value accumulates through an IUL. Um, I mean, honestly, if you compare it to a whole life, uh, I have a, a young lady in my team, Lita Delin. Uh, she's from uh, Chicago and she was with the New York Life Insurance Company for the last year and a half and they push very heavily whole life, whole life, whole life for your clients as retirement vehicles. And when she and I did a Zoom call together in the very beginning, I ran some illustrations with her current clients for her and we went through and we compared cash value accumulation. It was night and day. What, what was taking them 25 years to accumulate, we were doing in 10 years. Yep. And the other piece they push on, so man, you talk about cash value, but um, one of the things Mike stressed to me about it too is you know how the whole life works when that cash builds and they go and they take it, you know, that it actually decreases the value of the policy. So if it's a true mortgage payment protection policy, instead of trying to protect their son or daughter, and they go and they borrow against these whole life policies and they have to pay it back. If yep. they don't, Get rid then, of you know, they'll lapse out that policy and then they're left without protection. So, you know, you really don't want the client to. I mean, they can utilize it. I don't think they don't want them to.